Welcome to this Explore Composites video on machinable tooling boards. This is a compliment to an article on the website. Let's check that out for more information. First, a little bit about the tooling that you'd use to cut this stuff. Uh, pretty standard. It's designed to be easy to machine. I'd stick to carbide tooling. You can get away with more flutes than you would for wood or MDF. And um, most manufacturers will give you machining guides in terms of feeds and speeds and the types of tooling to use. Generally it's a pleasure to machine and works great. So starting from the left this big stack with the lightest stuff I've got this is a trimer insulation foam. It's an example of something very light you wouldn't really want to use for an actual surface but it makes great filler. You can use the lighter cheaper material inside making glue ups and it saves you money so you don't have to pay for the expensive high density stuff where you don't need it and this Reku tool is sort of a, the lowest density you might want to use directly for a tool it's 15 pound it will be difficult to sand with a primer but for things that are not going to have a cosmetic surface or that you're going to paint afterwards these lower density materials are fine they, they're cheaper generally you pay in pretty direct proportion to the density for these materials so if you can get away with something that machines faster and is cheap and you deal with the surface later that's fine with a you know, adhesive Teflon or primer when you get into the 20 pound range it's totally doable it's just a little more trouble because the density between the foam and the primer that you use um, becomes just harder to deal with but you get up in the 28 30 pound range these are really nice and up through 45 pound this is sort of the, the sweet spot in terms of something that machines really nicely and also has a very hard surface this precision board is a high temperature product and is cookable so you can use this for pre preg it does have thermal expansion issues like all the other foams here is a very standard stuff you use for all different types of room temperature and low temperature tooling. Um, it can be polished, it's hard, it sands nicely, it takes primer and um, the primer sealer systems that a lot of release manufacturers supply. And moving into higher density, this wrench shape is probably more than you'd need for a composite tool. It's um, you can definitely hear it ring in these higher densities. They're uh, great for thermoforming tools and foundry stuff. Um, this is a filled material. It's a little nastier to cut, but very high density and can be used for things that are sort of above and beyond what you typically find in terms of requirements of composites projects but they're good to know about for compression molds or forming tools and things like that and moving on from the urethanes to the epoxies this SICA board is a very standard type of epoxy tooling board most manufacturers supply a, a 700 kilo or similar material it's a bit more stable than the urethane. It can handle higher temperatures. It machines nicely. That's a little harder, more chippy. And you can see it, um, it's more likely to make dust than those nice pretty flakes the urethane makes. But it's great for low temperature prepreg and it's relatively economical compared to building a carbon tool. This stuff is pretty neat. This is Compa Tool. It's a ceramic tooling material. It's kind of like chalk and it requires a, a densifier to make the final surface but it takes this very high temperature resistance tolerance excellent stability and it's just pretty cool product compared to graphite which is the last example here um, I can't really recommend using graphite unless you have a very specific application because it's so messy it's heavy um, it has perfect uh, CTE to match carbon so for small things, if you have the ability to machine it, that's, it could be great.
but it's just it's nasty stuff. So overall the uh, mid-range urethanes and epoxies are probably the most handy and um, generally you know what I've always found most useful. It's just a quick chart of price compared to MDF and aluminum. Um, the 35 40 pound urethane is a nice sweet spot there in terms of value. And talking about CTE here is a little chart of the coefficients of thermal expansion for the various materials you can see how they compare to aluminum and also the composite and this is a quick example of how to calculate CTE um, to give you a sense of how much longer or thicker something is going to get. For more information on how to use these materials there's an article on the Explore Composites website it talks about how to make blocks and efficiently use these sheet goods to you know, make the shapes you want without spending forever machining. So check that out if you're interested and thanks for watching the video.